Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show. I'm here just outside of Sheffield with Oren Coley. Now, Oren, everyone else is inside hiding from the rain and the floods. We're outside trying to climb. Yeah, the weather's been really bad here recently, like not nice, everywhere's flooded and wet. But I wanted to send, I've been trying a project for a while and I felt like we could do it and that it'd still be dry. So. Well, we're not going to reveal uh, what happened for Oren's project. Uh, that will be coming to Epic TV soon. Ah! Very, very soon. But today, because it's the gear show, we're going to be talking about climbing shoes. Oren is an Evolve athlete, so we're focusing on Evolve shoes. So, Oren, honestly, uh, I've never actually worn Evolve shoes. Like I've never tried them, I've never owned a pair, I've never bought a pair. And that's kind of good because I'm going to be asking you questions that someone who might never have tried the shoes might ask you. How long have you been with Evolve for? How did that relationship start? I first started wearing Evolve shoes, I want to say maybe 2011, some, somewhere around that region. Um, I was quite young at the time I was looking to try and get a sponsor and I was given an opportunity from the UK Evolve distributor Beyond Hope to be a part of their sponsored team and I started getting shoes from them then in 2012. Well I can see you brought three shoe models with you today uh, so the Shaman is the one that you've got down there that I, I know most of all you know it's like it's sort of the Evolve talisman in a way it's always that shoe that's there so let, let's start with the Shaman. What do you use this shoe for and where do you use it? The Shaman, honestly, I think you can use it comfortably in any realistic scenario. You want to do indoor bouldering, great. Sport, indoor sport climbing, amazing. You want to get out on the rock bouldering or sport, it's fine. Even trad climbing, I can think of numerous hard trad ascents that were done by certain people in these. Um, the good thing about the Shaman is it's quite an aggressive high performance shoe but it doesn't sacrifice on comfort. It's a really comfy shoe to wear. You can spend a long time in it. You can push yourself, tick your hard projects, and but not necessarily be crippling yourself in an agonizingly aggressive pair of shoes. So with Evolve, uh, it's not Vibram, it's nothing like that. It's a different type of rubber. What's it called? What's the main one they use for Evolve? Evolve uses Trax rubber. Um, they have a couple variations of it, which they use on different models, which are better for different situations really. So when do you grab the Shaman out of your cupboard? When it's like, right, Shaman time, I'm gonna use that one. I've used the Shaman in different situations over the years. When the Shaman 2, which is this model, this is one in particular is the Kai limited edition version. Um, when it came out, I it was their sort of highest performing shoe at the time. And I climbed my first ever 8B boulder in a pair of them. And it was awesome and I was, I was blown away because I, that was what it's there for. They've since came out with loads more models, loads of really high performance shoes models, which are awesome to use. Um, so the Shaman is kind of, for me, taken more of a back step for my route setting, testing, my kind of daily use wear, where I don't want to use my, my current best pair I have that I'd wear in a competition or on my hard project on rock. I, I'd use them for that. Awesome. And the three Velcro system, what's the advantage of that in your opinion? The triple Velcro system, the advantage of it is it kind of emulates lace-up shoes in a way. There's no real secret, I think, that lace-up shoes will give the best fit um, in any climbing shoe. But not many people want to wear lace-up shoes these days because climbing shoes are quite uncomfortable generally. So this, it pulls from three different directions to create closure across the top which hopefully emulates that as best as it can. Okay, moving on then, uh, the middle shoe uh, with a sort of slightly weird zigzaggy uh, Velcro system. What's that called and what's that all about? This is called the Agro. Um, it's one of their highest performance shoes, really. It's, as the name implies, it's pretty aggressive. Uh, generally, it's probably encouraged for pretty high-end bouldering. It's my go-to shoe in competitions, World Cups, things like that. Um, because I feel it works really well all round in those situations. Standing on volumes, smearing, small edges, it kind of, it does a really comfortable balance between all of them. Now I'm a big fan of a toe patch that I can just wodge in something and forget about. The size of that toe patch is ridiculous. It's not a toe patch, it's a toe shoe in a way. Uh, that must help on those weird World cup -y, toe hooky kind of moves. Yeah, there's a lot of rubber on this shoe and it's, it's pretty insane but 
Honestly, like when I'm wearing these, I find toe hooking, as you could guess, is one of the best things that they do, better than any shoe I've ever owned. Like I feel like I can toe hook anything. And is it a soft shoe or quite stiff? Um, it has no midsole, um, so it's relatively flexible. When they're brand new, they are pretty stern and they do take a bit to break in. But once you've broken them in, you get into this really happy medium where it's very powerful but very sensitive at the same time. The final shoe we're going to talk about is something that I'm personally quite excited by, mainly because I know it's an indoor climber shoe and I do a lot of indoor climbing, mainly because Chamonix is under snow most of the year. <laughs> but also it's the name, the X1. It sounds like a fighter plane. Yeah, it's it's got a pretty cool name, the X1. It could mean or stand for whatever you want it to mean or stand for, I guess. It's their version of, I guess, catering to this new style of climbing. The new style being a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people, they want to bounce around on volumes. They want to do the sort of parkour style. Um, and this is where I feel this shoe really comes into its own. And what's durability like? Because I know that a soft shoe, generally, will, you'll go through it in about five minutes flat. Uh, and, and that's kind of to be expected, isn't it? Because if you've got a high-performance soft shoe, of course you're going to go through it more than something that's really durable, really stiff. Uh, how have you found that in terms of how long it lasts? Um, this has actually been my first experience with a shoe this soft. And I was really impressed. They they were pretty comfortable, they did the job, they were quite powerful and aggressive. Um, they were incredibly sensitive standing on stuff. I could really feel what I was standing on, which is often quite important when you're trying things with such marginal room for error. Yeah. Um, in terms of lasting, I've had these shoes for since 2017, maybe. I mean, if you can see the end, there's no hole or anything. I predominantly have worn them in competition, which is why, and in competition, there isn't much room for error. You, you need to climb as best you can. Um, so they're when I'm trying to be perfect, let's say. They, yeah, they've, they've lasted a good amount of time, but like any soft shoe, you need to execute your footwork well to make, the, to get the benefit of them and to make them last. It's interesting you say that, because when we were filming with you uh, today, your footwork is very precise. So I can, I can imagine why that's lasted so long. If that was me, I'd have a great big whacking hole at the <laughs> end of it by now. Um, if we talked about the Agro having a big toe patch, this one's got a big but grippy toe patch. It's got that sort of textured surface over the top. Uh, how do you find that in, in a toe hook scenario? <laughs> Uh, they're still really good for toe hooking. They're probably not quite at the level the aggro is in terms of toe hooking, but they do a, a, a darn good job of it. Um, because of the lack of rubber over the top in comparison to the aggro, it gives more room for sensitivity, feel and flex. The aggro, they're very much, it's like your foot's in, you're like, right, I'm in. Yeah. This is what I'm doing. Um, whereas this, it, it's giving you a lot more to feel, which is quite important. Um, so let's talk about size and I'll ask you about all of them, but what is your street shoe size and what size do you go for in the X1s? So I'm a UK 7.5 in my trainers. In my X1s I downsized by one, about half a size, sorry. So these are a seven. Okay. Um, they do fit a little bit smaller than a lot of Evolve shoes and I, I often aim to try and get my shoes as tight as I can realistically. So I think if you were looking to get a pair, your safest option would probably be to try on a pair at your local wall um, or at your local shoe demo uh, and start at your street shoe size. It's, with Evolve, it's always the best bet to start at your street shoe size. They go for as like for like as they can with that. Um, I'm predominantly very close to my street shoe size in all Evolve shoes. So that's a good place. So for all of them, start a street shoe size, try on a different pair and just fine tune it after that. Yeah, exactly. So that's how I've done with all of them I've ever had. I start my street shoe size and depending on how that feels, I will I usually work down from there just to try and see how small can I go in this realistically where I'm not completely sacrificing comfort, but I'm also not sacrificing performance at the same time. Well, thank you for, for teaching me that as well, because genuinely never tried them, uh, and now I kind of want one of those X1s, so thank you very much. Guys, if you want to check anything out that Oren's been talking about, there's links in the description below, and stay tuned for the video at the crag we're sitting underneath currently, coming soon to Epic TV. See you later. See ya.